All right, let's continue. Uh, before talking about regularized fitting, um, there's one thing that your classmates just reminded me of in the break. Um, so actually, these two models, best subset and backward stepwise, and, and even forward stepwise, uh, are going to end up meeting at the same place, because uh, there's only one model, MP. So MP and M0 is common between these three models. That's why the, the start of you know, the, the, sparse, the most sparse model and the most dense model are just unique. Therefore, they, they end up at the same place. Uh, it's just you know, the kind of journey is different, and that's pretty much what matters. Um, and forward stepwise is not necessarily below backward stepwise. I mean, in this example, I just drew it like this, but um, there's, this is not necessarily the case. What we know is that both of these methods are below best subset in terms of uh, predictive accuracy or in terms of R squared. All right, so, yep. Yeah. So, as your classmate reminded me of this, um, MP is unique. It's just one model where all the predictors are in. Um, as MP is unique and R squared of MP is just one value, uh, these different methods are going to end up at the same place. So, previously I drew this like this, and it was incorrect. Maybe forward didn't end up there, right? No, both of them end up with MP in the end. Because MP is just one model where all the predictors are in. So, there's no, no you know, no variation between different MPs. I mean, in forward model, you might not end up with the best model. Yeah, MP is eventually the same thing for all of these. Also, M0 is the same thing for all of these. Uh, the difference is between M1, M2, all the way to MP minus 1. Um, and, and actually, that's what matters, because you know, when we want to sparsify, eventually we are interested in this part of the story, in what's happening in between. So thanks a lot for reminding me of this. One other thing about step 3. So for step 3 of all these three methods, we usually use cross-validation. Um, and uh, let me just give you an example of what cross-validation would show us. So regardless of whether we're doing best subset or forward stepwise or backward stepwise, we're going to end up with a list of models at the end of step two, and we want to compare them using cross-validation in step three. So using cross-validation, we may get something like this. We do cross-validation, right? You may remember it from last lecture. And from cross-validation, we're going to get some average of MSEs of different splits. We call it MSE CV. And we get some standard error of MSE. So this is the case of regression, a regression task. Standard error of MSE is standard deviation between those values of MSE 1, MSE 2, all the way to, let's say, MSE 10, if we are doing tenfold cross-validation. So the standard deviation is So with cross-validation, we get, let's say, five-fold five -fold cross-validation. We get MSE1 from split 1, MSE2, MSE3, MSE4, and MSE5. These are five numbers. There are two things we do with these numbers. Uh, we average them, and that gives us MSE cross-validated. And next thing we do is calculating standard deviation. The standard deviation between these numbers would be standard error, estimation of standard error of MSE. And for each choice, we, we're going to do one of these, right? So for example, we, um, this is the same for hyperparameter tuning. You know? um, if you're talking about you know, a model with you know, um, two predictors, right? with that model, we're going to do this. And all of this will be for the model with two predictors. Then for the model with three predictors, we're going to do all of these. Therefore, we can have number of predictors here and MSE in here. So so let's say these are different you know, possibilities for number of predictors. Um, the curve that we would get for MSE could be something like this. You can see that the minimum of this curve is here, right? So for those of you who may remember APS 1070, uh, we would say this is the suitable hyperparameter. Right? So also in here, it would be the suitable number of predictors. But when we have access to this standard error and acknowledge it, uh, then we change our process a little bit. So with the standard error, if we also plot the standard error for all of these, there's going to be some plus one standard error and minus one standard error for these. right? So 
So one advantage of cross-validation is that it actually gives us a plot with low standard error. So this is really an exaggerated case. So compared to validation, cross-validation gives us lower standard errors. But let's say the standard errors look like this. If they look like this, first we're going to see that the minimum of this plot is here, right? And then we look at the standard error around that minimum. The standard error around this minimum shows us that, you know, that there's no statistically meaningful difference between this and this because their kind of confidence intervals are overlapping. Then we use the one standard error rule. One standard error rule says first find the minimum, then pick the simplest model within the range of standard error for that minimum. So first we see three is suitable, but there's a high variation. This means that this point could have been here. It could have been here, right? Um, and then as this point in here is still within the standard error of this one, we're going to actually pick two instead of three. So this is just a kind of a, a minor detail about um, you know, hyperparameter tuning or picking the number of predictors when we have uh, wide standard errors. But actually, with cross-validation, uh, we usually get, with cross-validation, uh, I guess this is more representative of real situations. The standard errors could be really small. As the standard, standard errors are small, uh, let's say, the, let's say it, uh, it um, flats out here. So this is flat. And this is increasing for this part. So this is the minimum. Um, and we see that the error of this minimum is up to here. And this is a statistically meaningful different level of accuracy, different level of performance. That's why we actually pick this one. Because you can see that this is statistically significantly higher than performance of this plus one standard error. So this is called the one, uh, one standard um, error rule. Any questions? So what I was trying to say is that uh, you know, to be more exact, we're not just picking the minimum. We should pick the smallest model or the simplest model uh, that has a performance within one standard deviation of the minimum. And when we do cross-validation, uh, pretty much you know, what we are used to from APS 1070 uh, is indeed the case. Picking the minimum and picking simplest model within one standard deviation of minimum are usually the same thing because the standard error bars are really tiny with cross-validation. Um, all right. Let's take another quick break, and then we discuss regularized fitting. <laughs> 